So Sherrod Brown is a Democratic senator from Ohio, and I actually really like him. He's proposed a bunch of populist anti-outsourcing bills, and he's generally been great for the working class. Um, and when I say the working class, by the way, I don't mean it in the same way the corporate media means it, because they use working class and white working class interchangeably. Like, when I say working class, I mean of every race and background. Um, I hate the way corporate media uses it because it's just like, it's really gross and it implies that, like, people of color can't be working class. And it's just not true. So, when I say that, I mean, Sherrod Brown has been great for the rainbow coalition, if you will, of working class people. Um, so, I, I like a lot of his record. He ran kind of an unapologetically left campaign and he crushed in his race. Compare that to Senator Joe Donnelly, Democratic senator of the state over in Indiana. He ran a very right-wing campaign and lost. So it shows you that left politics actually works. Um, well, now he's thinking of running for office in 2020. And in one statement, I'm not kidding here, one statement, he tanked his chances. Take a look. I know most of the Democratic primary campaigns or candidates are all talking about Medicare for all. I think instead we should do Medicare at 55 if someone wants, if someone's lost her job at 58 or her, his plant's closed at 62, he should be able to buy into Medicare early. It's 50 or 55, I'm, I'm not sure where, which, what level, a couple of bills out there, but they should be able to buy into Medicare early. It will cost them a little bit more because it, they will be in Medicare longer than they've paid into for their lives. But to me, that's about helping people now and a solution and something that we might be able to get through Congress. So he's saying, well, that's practical. We might be able to get that through Congress. Hey, Sherrod, you're going to get zero Republican votes no matter what you propose. Zero. When they did Obamacare, which is a right-wing reform, that's a fact. It came from the Heritage Foundation. That's a right-wing think tank. Newt Gingrich and Chuck Grassley supported it. It was Mitt Romney's bill in Massachusetts. That's what the individual mandate system is. That's what Obamacare is. So the Democrats did the right-wing reform and got zero Republican votes. So what does that mean? They're never going to vote for anything you do because they're uber-partisan assholes. So what does that mean? Here's what that means. You're supposed to do what your base wants. And you're saying we're not going to do that. Oh, it's not practical. Well, nothing's practical because you're never going to get Republican votes. So what that means is you have to hold your Democratic caucus. And the way you hold the caucus is to fucking twist arms and fight for it. And Sherrod Brown obviously doesn't know how to do that, hasn't thought this through. This is what I've been railing about on this show for years now. You're gonna, no matter, even if you have a Democratic supermajority, you're gonna have Democrats who are like, I'm not gonna vote for it. There's gonna be five, six of them. I, I'm, I don't vote for it. I'm not gonna vote for it. I'm not gonna vote for it. I'm from a Republican state. I can't be viewed as far left, so I can't vote for this far left legislation. I need somebody in positions of power who knows how to fight on this stuff, who's going to call, the president's going to call them into the office and say, listen, here's the deal. You vote for this or you lose your career. I'm way more popular than you. I'm the president. I'm going to go to your state and campaign for a primary opponent against you and make sure you lose. I'm going to fund your opponent who's running against you. Unless you vote for this bill, in which case I'll campaign for you, I'll help you, and you'll end up winning. Okay? You don't believe me? Listen, look at these polls. 70% of the American people want Medicare for all. You're going to vote against it? Even the majority of your state, even though you say they're right wing, look, the polls show that your state is in favor of it. What are you doing? Vote for this or else. You need somebody who's going to twist arms like FDR did back in the day and like LBJ did on some issues when he wanted something accomplished. Twist arms, bitch. He's like, oh, it's not practical. And No, you're going to... Nothing is practical. But you have to get it done. That's what being a good politician is about. It's about getting your will implemented, the will of the people implemented, by any means necessary. So, it, it's... Now, here's why this is basically unforgivable. And this is unacceptable. Sherrod Brown's problem is he's a victim of the narrow worldview of Washington, D.C. So, in other words, what that means is he's in Washington, D.C. He knows what all the chatter is like in Washington, D.C. with the fellow politicians around him. And they are just have nothing but utter contempt for the idea of Medicare for all. Because they think Medicare for all, oh my God, that's totally reworking our healthcare system. We can't totally rework our healthcare system. We have all these, uh, these competing special interests we have to balance. We have lobbyists. We have big pharma. We have the for-profit health insurance companies. You know, the system is so entrenched as it is that what are we going to do? We're going to fucking overturn the apple cart and start from scratch? I mean, that's crazy. How can we do such a thing? And this is the, 
the the conventional bubble wisdom in Washington D.C. Like how Bernie with his pie in the sky, far leftism, things that'll never happen, unicorn fairy dust nonsense. And this is what everybody in Washington D.C. believes. Now Sherrod Brown has is a senator, so he's in Washington D.C. He's a, he's aware of what everybody around him is saying, and he's internalized that dialogue. And so Sherrod Brown still. His instincts are leftist. He wants to be a leftist, so he's like, okay, well, let's split the difference. And I'll say, listen, the left-wing idea that I think is viable is let's just lower the Medicare age to 55. That makes sense, right? So in his mind, he thinks like, oh, look at me. I'm being a fucking populist left-wing hero, and I'm saying we'll do Medicare at 55. And he views that as this is practical. This is something that can work. This is something where everybody in Washington, D.C. won't scoff at you if you propose it. But here's the problem, Sherrod. You're biased by the narrow worldview of Washington, D.C. Do you even know that every other developed country has one version or another of a single-payer system? Do you know that? Are you aware of that? Are you aware that we pay like double what other developed countries pay and we still have 29 million people who are uninsured? Are you aware that 32 to 45,000 Americans die every year because they don't have access to health care? Are you aware of these things? You're probably not aware of these things. Because... The reality is, you have to break out of that Washington, D.C. bubble and look at these issues objectively. And when you look at them objectively, you find out very quickly, 70% of the American people are for Medicare for All, which should be the end of the conversation alone, because we live in what's supposed to be a constitutional republic and representative democracy. But beyond that, if every other developed country has one version or another of it, and we're ranked dead last consistently among all these countries, the Commonwealth Fund study from not that long ago, we're 11 out of 11th. We're 11th out of 11 when it comes to healthcare systems in the developed world. So you have to break out of that Washington, D.C. bubble, look at this objectively, and then fight. That's what people want in a president. That's what people want in a leader. Not somebody who says, oh, that's not possible. <laughs> it's not possible to have every other developed country do it. What happened? The United States is supposed to be, oh my God, we're the shining city on a hill. We can do anything. Unless it's something that every other developed country has done and done successfully, then we can't do it. Not going to work, dude. Not going to happen. So I like Sherrod Brown because a lot of the stuff he's done has been genuinely good for the working class, populist, left-wing proposals. But he really destroyed his chances in this one statement. He did. Because guess what? Medicare for All is a litmus test. And it should be. It should be. You have standards. You have policies you want implemented. Here you have a guy who's telling you up front, I'm not going to fight for that. I don't think that's possible, so I'm not going to fight for it. Well, then you're going to start the negotiation for Medicare 55, and your end position is going to be what? I don't know. We'll slightly improve the Affordable Care Act. <laughs> More status quo bullshit. You got to be smarter than this, Sherrod. You got to look at the entire, the entire world, see what they're doing with their health care systems, look at the polling data, see what the American people want. We're done with your shitty, you know, fucking split the baby, middle ground nonsense in Washington, D.C. That's the problem. You're in that culture for too long, and you don't understand the seething anger the rest of the country has for the right policies. So get your head out of your ass.